let's have a look at part B now. Let's just let's just answer it. And the questions will um or the pointers will arise as we actually solve it. Um, find the coordinates of any points of inflection. Okay. So I'm going to say points of inflection. Sorry, I shouldn't have done that. I'm just lazy. Points of inflection. <laughs> now mark this. Okay. You notice I said stationary points exist when f dash equals zero, right? No qualification. They just do. They absolutely will every time. Okay. If you've got this, you've got this, and if you've got this, you've got that. Okay. But you remember last time I was trying to point out, eh, not always. Okay. I'm going to give you some counterexamples soon. I'm going to say points of inflection may exist when the second derivative f dash is equal to zero. Okay, they may exist. So I'm going to solve this thing. I'm going to say... F double dash? Yep. Okay. Yep. So I'm looking for concavity now. I'm looking for when there is no concavity, because that is a likely place where it will change. Okay? So they may exist, so I'm just going to solve, right? Uh, in other words, 6x equals zero, so x equals zero. No problem. Okay. Um, it's because it's easy. I'm just going to um, work out the table of values here. Well, I'm always going to do that. I'm not even going to work out where this is vertical yet because I don't even know if it's a point of inflection yet. So I don't need to worry about the y coordinate if it's not even a point of inflection. I'm going to draw my table. Hmm. So now I'm not looking at the gradient changing, I'm looking at the concavity changing, right? So I still want the plus minus thing happening. So I'm going to go this time x against f double dash, or d squared y and dx squared, if that's how the whole question was phrased, which is not in this case, okay? So I'm testing 0, right? I'm going to go minus 1 and 1, okay? Again, we've talked about neighborhood tests, right? Um, I know because of the nature of this function, like look at that thing. It's, it's acting very, very predictably, so I don't need to worry too much about being like, I'll test minus 0.1 and positive 0.1. Like, don't worry, it's okay. Look how simple the function is. Uh, and I know what these net values are going to be. Uh, minus 6, 0, and 6. Okay. So I can see a change in the concavity because the sign has changed, just like it did for the first derivative. But now I'm looking for concavity rather than gradient. Okay. So I'm going to say, I'm going to come back over here on the left column, if that's okay with you guys. <coughs> Okay, I'm going to say, therefore, your concavity changes sign. Okay, again, that's a critical statement to interpret this, right? It's the equivalent of this statement here. I'm making a conclusion about what numbers tell me about the shape. The concavity changes sign, so now I'm going to find where it is, right? So I'll say f of 0, which I believe it's 0, right? It's just, it just goes to the origin, because I think it's x cubed minus... 3x, right? So 0 take away 0. So I would say 0, 0 is a point of inflection. OK, happy with that? Um, sketch a graph of the function indicating all important features. Woohoo! Now the fun bit, OK? So you've got all of those features named there, right? So we're going to plot them, and then we're just going to join the dots. But we don't just join the dots. We know about what's happening at each of those dots. So we've got 1 comma minus 2, minus 1 comma 2. Okay. By the way, as soon as you have plotted those points, you can see, oh yeah, of course one has to be the maximum and one has to be the minimum, because how else are you going to get from one point to the other? But now you also know there's going to be this point of inflection right there in the middle, okay? So you can know, like, not just it's going to connect, but how it's going to connect, okay? So I'm getting something, I guess, a little bit like, ooh, no, wait, I'm missing one how more thing. How about the x intercept? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I, because I rubbed it off. So there you go, that's what we started with, right? So to factorize, I have this, right? So it's not that bad, come on. Um, I don't need to factorize it any further to know what my x-intercepts are going to be. I've already got one at the origin and plus or minus root 3. Okay. So remember, I've fenced myself in in terms of scale by saying that's 1 and negative 1. Okay. So root 3 is about 1.7. So you want to make sure that this is roughly in the right spot. So this is going to be something like, well, that's that'd be 2. So 1.7 might be there. 
And if that's negative 2, then we'll put some somewhere like that. Okay? So unfortunately, this does make it harder because now you can't play so fast and loopy like, you know, whee, it just goes through there. Now you know all these particular places that you pass through, right? So you have to be quite careful with them. So, and it's an odd function. That's right. So here, yeah, make sure it looks exactly, you know. All right, let's give it a shot, shall we? I uh, passed it to the wrong one. Oh no, I did it wrong. This is, like I just said, um, it is substantially harder than you've done before because now we know substantially more about this function than we did before. Okay? Now, I'm almost there. Uh, it says, sketch it indicating all important features. When they say all important features, 99% of the time they just mean. Tell me about all the stuff you just found. Okay, just, just put it on there. That's all it means. Okay. So I've already got, there's a max turning point there. And I'll write its coordinates. Okay, right there. Uh, here's my minimum. And again, it's coordinates. You found the point of inflection. You found the point of inflection. So you should say um, point of inflection at the origin. Okay, and then you've got, you've got roots. So you've got root 3, you've got negative root 3, and then you can graph that thing. Whoops, 3x, there you go. Okay, question? Um, I was doing a question on the homework, and we had to find a gradient at the point of inflection, mm -hmm. or like at different points. Um, is it necessary if we find it to put it on the graph? Because the answer had like the gradient on the graph, and I was like, that looks really bad. That is very unusual. That is yeah. highly unusual. Um, <coughs> this is this the, the reason why I chose out this question is because this is pretty standard. Um, the earlier parts and they do this in the HSC all the time, right? They'll say, okay, find find this determine nature, find this like show show that it is. It's not enough just to do that, right? And then say, ta-da, I found one. Okay, I'm going to give you the counter example as soon as I finish this conversation. And then once you have all of that, you just put that onto there. Like I yeah, I, I wouldn't expect that you usually have to label the gradient. Okay. 